All right, so our last question of the day comes from a very special somebody who has now written in twice. That person is at Elise the Battles. I hope I pronounced it correctly. If I don't, that's the second time I've screwed it up, and I apologize. <laughs> so, your question is, how can I enhance my application without being overwhelmed with activities, clubs, and obligations during the school year? Mm, that's a good question, because... <laughs> It's hard. Uh, it's, it, we've, we've talked on previous questions, but if you're just watching this one specifically right now, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a balance. Kara concluded our last question on that. It's a balance between school life and it's a balance between extracurriculars with your job, hanging out with your friends, and trying to figure everything out. So I say start slow, try to stick with school first, then pick up an extracurricular, try to figure out what you're interested in, start going into that. If you find out, we haven't mentioned this, but if you join a bunch of different clubs and you don't really like one, there's nothing stopping you from getting out. Mm -hmm. So if it's overwhelming, it's too much, jump out, even if it's something that you like and it just, the extracurricular is requiring too much attention. They're saying you have to be here these days, you have to fulfill a certain amount of time, whatever it is, and you just can't do it, there's no, no harm in throwing in the towel. It's something you wish you could do. It's going to feel bad for a little bit, but then you're going to feel a whole lot better when you have that free time to focus on everything else. So that's something I would like to say is it's uh, not a full surrender. It's a <laughs> live to fight another battle, you know. But um, with the clubs and activities, we also talked about having scheduled uh, using Excel or whatever, uh, Google Spread. And uh, calendars are huge just for scheduling off blocks of time. It's also important for reminders uh, because if you put something on there that you're supposed to do every week and then it pops up and you forgot, and you get <laughs> at least you can set between like a half an hour to an hour reminder, whatever interval you actually want to do. And that's huge, uh, especially for me. I just became a puppy father. Um, so I need to make sure he gets his pill once a month. Uh, that's something I would always forget, but it pops up on my phone. Uh, so it doesn't really have to do with extracurriculars, but uh, I guess it could if you're working out of kennel. So that's how it looks <laughs> in. We're all good here. But yeah, what do you guys think? Is uh... Uh, get involved in the summer to start with, like summer jobs, True. summer activities. Right. Um, you know, maybe see if you can volunteer at a camp, or maybe you go to a camp every year. Um, things like that, and just trying to find ways and off times that you can get involved. Not necessarily with like at school activities you can get involved in your community too I took dance classes from when I was two years old up until I'm still taking them now and that's like an hour out of my day and see what their schedule is so maybe there's like a studio right down the street from you that you can go to or there are like community leagues that you can get involved in with your more into sports and they have different they have easier practice times that you can get to so they have games on the weekends practice on the weekends Maybe you can go to your local community center and they have like pick up basketball games that you yeah. can get involved in. Uh, think about volunteering on the weekends too. Just ways in your off time that you're not overwhelmed with things to do, but you have the time to devote to other things and other interests. And speaking of sports, there is um, they have intramurals for people who you know at any age, um, which I didn't know about when I was in high school because. I stopped playing volleyball and basketball my sophomore year of high school, and my senior year I was like, oh, I wish I could still play, um, but I don't want to be on that yeah. level of competition. I just want to be like casual, like once a week with my friends. Um, and they actually have picked a lot of pickup leagues for all ages, up to like when you're 60. My dad is still playing on a pickup hockey league. He's 63. <laughs> Not the bowling league, league. But for him. Bowling. The bowling league. Bowling. Yeah, there's so many leagues if you look into it yeah. and just gather group of friends. <laughs> mix and mingle on that <laughs> but uh on that too um this is something i didn't know about until i went to high school but the pal which is the police academy league i believe is the correct terminology for that uh they taught me how to box um so that was something that was really cheap at the time i don't know if it's still this so don't quote me don't go in there and try to get the price but mm -hmm. uh if you were under 18 it was completely free um, so you could go in there, you weren't guaranteed a trainer, but you could go in and use the equipment and somebody would finally notice you and then uh, take you under their wing and, and give you a go. And then when you turned 18, it was only $10 a month. 
I'm still grandfathered into that, which is great. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love going there, it's awesome. But it's something that you wouldn't expect, especially as a kid, you hear police and you might scream and run the other way. <laughs> uh, but there's tons of great people that you meet there and uh, friendships that have lasted me a long time. Uh, so that's something that, uh, consider options. And like you said, going to camps in the summer is a great point. Mm -hmm. um, even if you're not a camp counselor, you're just attending the camp, it's, you get to do all these crazy things and mm -hmm. meet a bunch of people that might not necessarily be from your school either. It's all these mm -hmm. people coming yeah. in from different areas. Uh, so that's, that's fun. Uh, yeah, so. I was a camp counselor for a couple summers. And it was just nice because it was just, um, you know, when you're on summer vacation, it, at first it's great, and then after a while you're like, okay, I'm kind of bored, like I'm not really sure like what to do. My parents mm -hmm. are working, I'm home alone. Um, and for me, having that summer blocked off working, I mean, the days were long, you know, I was mm -hmm. with kids all day, but I made really great friendships and connections, and I actually used um, the head of the camp as a recommendation um, for other jobs and whatnot. And so for me, I had a great time, I was getting paid well, and I made friendships and made my network larger in my community just by doing that. Um, and then once the summer was over, I didn't have to worry about that during school and during sports and whatnot. So it was really nice for me to kind of like be able to take that summer and, and work and have fun at the same time. Yeah. Summer's a great time to get involved, um, especially since we're coming up on summer now. It's only a couple months away. See what they have for camp counselor positions or camps that are still open for people to apply to uh, or see if there are like summer sports that you can jump in on. Maybe not quite a pickup league, but like a league that you can join specifically for three months. Um, I don't know where you would check that out. Maybe uh, community centers, yeah, try the YMCA, mm -hmm. um, and just you know ask ask your guidance counselor. They're a wealth of information about your community, what's available to you. So talk to them. Talk to sports coaches um, in the, you, at your school. Um, if you're involved in a sports, if they have any sports camps that you can go to. Also, if you want to add to your resume and go on a little vacation, uh, there's always a bunch of mission trips mm -hmm. throughout the summer. You can check with, uh, I know a lot of churches do it or communities. Um, you could really just Google it. There's so many throughout the summer. Um, they vary in length. Some are just a week long, some are longer, but I think that's a great opportunity and it's a cheap vacation. <laughs> could go somewhere that's decent <laughs> and help out great cause yeah yeah I think we threw the everything and the kitchen sink on the table on that I just want to loop back to <laughs> these are all great opportunities to pick stuff up but to balance it yep summer is a great point to do it one during your downtime um, creating that timesheet of here's where I have available and what I can do when I can't do it I'm prioritizing when you know you can push stuff off and when you know you can't push stuff off. Not being afraid to leave if you feel way too overwhelmed from one of the extracurriculars. Um, and then also being able to not worry about, hey, I don't have that many extracurriculars, but I have a job. Does that still apply for my college application? So it is, and going back to Carrie's for the third time, I think, for this podcast, <laughs> a work-life school, I guess, instead of work balance. And it's, it's a balance between everything. You really want to meet that sweet spot of being able to maintain your grades but still have a lot of fun and get to go out and experience all these things that your school doesn't typically provide. But you don't want to go so far on one side or the other because then it makes you uh, not the, the most uh, balanced person for schooling and <laughs> doing too many crazy <laughs> things at once. So don't uh, overwhelm yourself, but enjoy. Mm -hmm.